So a few weeks back I uploaded a video uh, about how to design a 3D printable wing from model aircraft and how to configure the 3D printer slicer to uh, 3D print the lightest wing possible. And I got so much interest on that video that I'm going to decide to 3D print a whole aircraft just to give it a go as a proof of concept. Now I know a lot of people told me to print holes in the wing and then cover it with uh, a monocoat film. Uh, but then that kind of breaks the rule of being a fully 3D printable plane. So I had to come up with an aircraft design that was as lightweight as possible. And the first thing that sprung to mind was a flying wing design. So the problem with flying wings is that there's very little space to position uh, the batteries and motors and other electronics uh, in the wing cord. And this becomes an issue when you're trying to uh, figure out where the CG goes because you can't shift the battery uh, forward and backwards that much. So I was looking at some uh, designs on the internet and came across a few designs where the, it was, it's basically a flying wing with a fuselage that hangs beneath it. Uh, I thought this would be a good design because I can put the motor at the front of the pod and uh, the battery can also shift uh, as far forward as I want it so that I don't have to add any extra battery capacity or any leads, lead weights to reach the correct centre of gravity. So after six hours of designing, this is what I've come up with. It utilises the same 3D printing uh, technique that I used in my previous video. Uh, it's got an 84cm wingspan, a 16cm wing cord and the sweep angle of the wing is 15 degrees. I've estimated the weight of the airframe only to be about 350 grams, which isn't too bad actually for the size of the aircraft. So I'm going to load it all onto my printer and click print. So all of the major components have finished printing. Got the uh, the front of the fuselage, the rear of the fuselage, the outer wing sections and the inner wing sections. Uh, I'm still printing the elevons and the winglets, uh, but I thought I'd start gluing it together and installing the electronics. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready for the hype? <laughs> ready? <laughs> Alright, check the controls. There goes nothing. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. Before you write your comment about how the plane was tail heavy or 3D printed planes are too heavy, please watch to the end of the video. Oh, 
Oh my god, I can't believe it! I think it was too heavy. Yeah, that's not that bad. Look, it's much repairable. Design. It's definitely repairable. The main wing bit's fine, isn't it? You just need to glue another one of those like nose things on. Wait, it hasn't even broken the nose thing. Just come just unattached, isn't it? You need some better glue, mate. Show the video replay now. Yeah. <laughs> This is uh, aerospace engineering at its best. <laughs> <laughs> Add more tape. Yeah. You just cannot bother with the thing. Shit. <laughs> this is a new uh, tape canopy being installed. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. I think that's strong enough. Probably. Just chuck the battery forward. What about these winglets? How am I going to stick these on? We're missing one. This might fly for a bit. Seven days. Right. <laughs> this is ready, yeah? Yeah. Are you ready, Brett? Wait, wait, wait. Um, I am a professional because I have been on a plane before. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I've got all these fancy pictures of it in one piece. Hold up, need some more tape, need some more tape. I reckon this one's the one, Tom, you know? Yeah. I reckon, I reckon this is it. So mission planner is one circuit and then land, or...? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to move my quad around so I can follow it quickly. Into the Which way are you launching now? This way? Yeah. Okay. I'll stand with Richard so I don't hit myself with the quad. This guy's come to check us out, look. Yeah. He knows what's go really going on. Right, are you ready? I'm going to just hit full power and just go. Great, I'm already getting the air, yeah. There's definitely a stability issue because that was full power. It didn't sound like it had as much power that time. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. Did you bring a bin back? I should have. It's fine, PLA's biodegradable. <laughs> I was a bit too optimistic, I think. <laughs> so on the day that this crash footage was filmed, it was really hard to tell what the issue was. At first I thought it was tail heavy because it kind of like flipped around and, and didn't have much control, which is a common uh, issue of having a tail heavy plane. Uh, however, when I got home and I reviewed the footage, uh, when I launched it, it went into a flat spin uh, which is essentially a, a really bad yaw instability uh, and I believe this to be down to having the large fuselage uh, nose out the front of the aircraft and the really small winglets on the wingtips. The size of the winglets were mainly due to the size of my printer bed. I couldn't 3D print a large enough winglet in one piece uh, on my 3D printer so I had to find another material uh, just as a substitute just to test that it was this that was causing an issue. So I cut out some balsa wood winglets that are ridiculously huge and they glue on the wingtip like so. And I know it's not a 3D printed part but it's mainly just to prove that it was an instability issue. The uh, 3D printing techniques definitely held up in these crashes uh, which is the main thing here. I'll get the glue back out. Not looking good. What's happening? I can't believe it. Quickly, I think. So at this point, after having so many crashes, it was getting a bit frustrating having to glue it back together over and over again. But I had to get it working. From the previous two crashes, I realised that it was definitely not a stability issue because the plane would uh, track a nice trajectory after I'd launched it. My next thought was that it might be a lift issue, that the 3D printed aircraft was too heavy to fly. Uh, but before I printed it, I actually put the design in the CFD software 
to test the lift of the aircraft. I calculated the stall speed to be about 18 miles an hour, which isn't too fast actually. If you want to know how I calculated that, please check out my other video. My next thought was that I wasn't throwing it fast enough so that it was uh, just below stall speed as it left my hands. Uh, so I thought I'd give it another go and just launch it as hard as I could. Three, two, one. Oh my god, it kind of flew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so from this point, I sort of had an idea of what the issue was. Uh, with the flying wing, at the rear of the aerofoil, it has a slight... Uh, it's like to bend upwards which is called reflex. Now I did research this reflex angle uh, previously on the internet and I looked at a lot of flying wing design uh, aerofoils and I did actually incorporate some reflex into my aerofoil. However, I don't think it was enough and I didn't really fancy reprinting the whole wing. Uh, so the only way to counteract this temporarily just to get the plane flying uh, was to increase uh, the elevator trim on the elevons uh, to pitch the aircraft up a lot more. Maybe if I'd had someone launch the plane for me, I could have had my hand on the elevator stick to uh, pull up quick enough and uh, get the aircraft airborne. But because I was launching myself, uh, I didn't have time to get my hand on the stick and by that time it, it had already hit the floor. This time it will pitch right up and then... Yeah, but then you can push the nose down. It's easier to push <laughs> the nose down than pull yeah. the nose up. This time it's going to pitch up stall and just nose dive. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to be the first time I've it. I might do a quick run just to see if it can actually light. Advanced wind tunnel testing right here. <laughs> It looks like it wants to lift. What do you reckon? Oh, You're the uh, aerospace engineer. Yeah, shouldn't you be the one deciding? Soon to be, hopefully. Oh, wait, 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 I'm, wait, just wait. Do, I'm just going to do one more quick run. Any final words? Uh, no. That's like only one motor. I got all three of you in shot. It looks epic. <laughs> Gary, this is fucking sick, man. Oh my god! Oh. 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 You gotta do a roll at least, do you? Should I do a roll? Oh, I can do a roll, everyone follow it. Oh fuck! Oh. Did you get it? Yeah. I got yeah. It. yeah. And again? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That was fucking sick. We did it. Tapes like come off and it was like flapping about. I could hear it. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a thumbs up uh, and uh, yeah, subscribe. See you later.
So I learned a lot of things about this experiment, but I'm only going to list the things that are related to the 3D printed aspects of the aeroplane. The first thing that I learned is that the 3D printed parts of the aircraft are much stronger than I thought. Uh, the plane survived four crashes and not one 3D printed part was damaged. Nor that can be said for the glue that attached the 3D printed parts together. So if I'd redesigned it with uh, extra area tabs for the glue to join it, or even like a carbon spar through the wing, uh, then I wouldn't have had this problem. The next advantage to 3D printable aircraft is that you can easily modify them in a CAD software and reprint out the aircraft. For example, when I was having the issues with the reflex on the rear of the aerofoil of the aircraft, I could have redesigned it in the CAD model, uh, reprinted out a sec second prototype, and I may not have had issues uh, with needing to add so much up trim on the Elevon. One final thing I need to mention regards my previous video where I clearly stated I do not recommend you go out and 3D print your aircraft because this aircraft flew surprisingly well once I got it in the air. Uh, with a few modifications to the design it could be a decent aircraft. It wasn't too heavy. Uh, okay, maybe if I built it out of a different material I could have got away with a larger battery so therefore longer flight time. Uh, but in terms of flight characteristics it flew surprisingly well. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please leave a thumbs up if you like this experiment and please subscribe. Goodbye. <laughs>